Welcome to the digital workshop of the Chicago Manual of Style, presented by the Writing Center at Azusa Pacific University. In this workshop, we will cover why to use the Chicago Manual of Style. We will go over the Chicago Writing Style and the Chicago Notes Bibliography Citation Style, but we will not cover the Chicago Author Date Citation Style. Why use the Chicago Manual of Style? Well, generally, why any writing style? Writing styles are discipline-specific. Different disciplines, genres, and audiences have different needs. Conforming to a discipline-specific writing style helps your work fit in with the rest of the literature in that discipline by meeting the specific needs of the genre and audience for which you are writing. Why documentation or citation? Well, as Christians at Azusa Pacific University, we believe that God said, do not steal. By that, we believe that God meant do not steal money or possessions, but also do not steal words or ideas. Writers in all fields must give credit where credit is due. Writers must show where they fit in with the rest of the literature. Writers must tell readers where to go to learn more about their topic. Citations do all this work. So why Chicago in particular? Well, Chicago was designed for use in the humanities, including but not limited to literature, history, philosophy, ethics, theology, religion, archaeology, uh, biblical studies. Some English classes will use the Chicago style. Some leadership classes will use the Chicago style. It's designed for the humanities. The Chicago Manual of Style was first published in 1906 with a primary audience of editors and publishers. The book is thick, technical, and somewhat difficult to read. So a couple decades later, Kate Turabian wrote a guidebook to the CMS. Turabian's primary audience was students and professors. So her book is much easier to read. It's not quite as thick and technical, uh, but it includes all the relevant information that students and professors uh, might need for their writing and citation, and leaves out the more technical details that editors and publishers need. So as far as writing and citation goes, Chicago and Turabian are the same style. On the other hand, the APA style was written for use in the sciences, including both social sciences like psychology, sociology, etc., as well as natural sciences like biology, physics, nursing. The APA style is focused on precision, so it emphasizes publication dates because the sciences, uh, audiences in the sciences want to know that you have up-to-date information. The humanities doesn't emphasize the dates so much since we are often working with ancient sources, think of things like the Bible or classical works like Aristotle. So in-text citations in different styles emphasize different information. So why does any of this matter? Well, because incorrect style formatting citations and bibliographies raise a red flag to your reader. This writer maybe hasn't done good research and doesn't know what she or he is talking about. On the other hand, correct style formatting citations and bibliographies make it easier for your reader to understand you. Therefore, readers, including professors, are generally happier reading your work. Additionally, learning the Chicago Manual of Style now means you don't have to learn it while writing, so you save time. Trust me, it is much easier to learn how to do footnotes in the daylight than it is at 3 o'clock in the morning, the day your paper is due. Further, when your papers look professional, they are more likely to be treated as professional. And when your papers look professional, you appear more professional, therefore more credible and more authoritative as a writer. The Chicago Manual of Style is relatively flexible in certain regards, so you will need to check with your professor, or better yet, your syllabus, to see about any requirements for title pages or cover pages, headings and subheadings, pagination, other minor formatting details. As far as the writing style in the Chicago Turabian style, it is a professional academic style. You are not writing blog or social media posts. Writing for school or for publication is different from writing for the internet. Don't use contractions. See what I did there? Simply spell them out. In this case, it would be do not use contractions. 
generally write in the third person. Some first person pronouns are appropriate at times in things like introductions, conclusions occasionally, as well as reflection papers. In the Chicago style, use the Oxford comma, which is the comma before the last item in a list. Generally use present tense verbs to attribute information to sources. You are in conversation with sometimes ancient sources. The conversation is still happening. So use present tense verbs to attribute information to sources. Capitalize proper nouns such as names for God like the Father. Proper nouns like Christian, Christianity, Bible, place names like America, Africa, but do not capitalize adjectives, for example, biblical or godly. Also, do not capitalize heaven or hell. Some professors prefer that Bible citations be in footnotes. Others prefer them in parentheses within the text of the paper. In either case, give the name of the translation when quoting but not paraphrasing the Bible. So, for example, uh, to quote Genesis 2.25, a footnote would look like this, with Genesis abbreviated to the first three letters, followed by the full name of the translation in parentheses. Or, if not using footnotes for Bible citations, you can include the citation like this in the body of your paper, with Genesis abbreviated again to the first three letters, chapter, verse, and translation name. Footnotes have specific formatting requirements in the Chicago style. Generally, they require 10-point font, the same font as the body of your paper, indented, single-spaced, with one line space between footnotes. In general, footnotes should be placed at the end of a sentence outside punctuation, such as commas, periods, quotation marks, etc. When citing a reference work the first time, use the full citation style, which provides all publication information. All subsequent citations will use the short citation style, which generally includes only the author's last name, the, the title or a shortened title of the publication, as well as the page number from which the cited material came. So let's say in your paper you've got your first citation. We're going to need to use the full citation format. So in the body of your paper, you've got a quote, in parentheses, there's the punctuation ending the sentence, in this case a period, followed by the quotation mark, followed lastly by the footnote number. At the bottom of your page, the matching number would appear with the following information. Uh, this is a citation style for a book. Citations to books are the most basic type of citation. All other citation types are based on this style, so we've got to learn how to cite books first. Citations to books include the author's full name, followed by the book title in italics, and then in parentheses, all the facts of publication, including the publishing city, the publisher, and the year. And lastly, the page number, if your source has page numbers. So, for example, we might cite this book by Charles H. Talbert in italics, the full title of the book, followed by the city of publication, New York, the publisher name, Crossroad, the year of publication, 1992, and the page number of my quote, page 127. The next time I cite that book, I can shorten the citation to the author's last name, Talbert, a shortened form of the title, in this case, Reading John, and the page number, which is page 22. In other words, footnotes and bibliography entries tell readers who, what, where, and when about your source. Who is the author? What is the title of the publication? Where is the city and publisher name? When is the year of publication? And lastly, if your source has page numbers, provide page numbers for your citations in your footnotes. For example, we might cite Mary Shelley's book Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus, which was published in 18 by the publisher Lackington Hughes, Hardy, Maver, and Jones, which, was, which is located in London. Take a moment and try to write a footnote for this quote. You'll remember those four W's here. You'll have your quote ending with the period and then the quotation mark and lastly the footnote number. And at the bottom of the page will be the full footnote citation because this is the first citation to Shelley's book. So we would have the author's full name followed by the full title of the book in italics and then in parentheses all the facts of publication, the city, 
the publisher name and the year of publication, and lastly, the page number from which the quote came. Use block quote format when quoting five or more lines of text. For example, here we've got a long quote. So the block quote format indents the entire quote a half an inch with a regular margin on the right hand side, sometimes called a ragged or a jagged margin on the right. It starts on a new line and the paragraph continues on the next line after the, the block quote. The block quote is single spaced unlike the rest of the text and it appears without quotation marks because this unique formatting tells the reader clearly enough that this is a quote. In this particular example, the only thing missing from this block quote is a footnote after the period ending the quote. Block quotes also need footnotes, and this sample happens to be missing one. Take a moment and see if you can spot the differences between the footnote to Shelley's book Frankenstein and its matching bibliography entry. You might notice that the indentation is different. Footnotes use a first line indentation, while bibliography entries use what is called a hanging indent, where the first line is all the way to the left and any subsequent lines are indented a half inch. Additionally, footnotes present the author's name, first name, last name, while bibliography entries are organized by last name, comma, first name. And generally, most of the punctuation has been replaced by periods. So instead of having author, comma, title, parentheses publication information. We now have author period, title, period, publication information. Additionally, because we're citing the entire book and not just one page in the bibliography, you do not need to include page numbers for books. A bibliography is a full list of every source consulted, not just cited, when writing your papers, except for certain sources such as general reference works like Webster's Dictionary or Encyclopedia Britannica, any informal sources like a personal communication such as an email, as well as lectures. Alphabetize your bibliography by the author or by title if there is no author for your source. When having more than one work by the same author, use six hyphens in the spot for the author's name on the second and following entries. This is also true for consecutive footnotes. We'll see some examples of this later. Don't worry too much about it right now. Use a hanging indent. Any lines after the first line of an entry are indented a half inch in the bibliography. Single space entries, but add an extra line between each citation, just like footnotes. Include DOIs or URLs for web sources and do not number or bullet point references. Again, bibliography entries are giving the same basic information to readers, answering the questions of who, what, where, and when about a source. For example, we might have this book Bandersnatch by Dr. Diana Glyer. In the bibliography, it would be organized by the author's last name, comma, first name, the full title of the publication, the name of the illustrator, in this case, James A. Owen. This is also the place where you can put any names of editors, translators, anyone else named on the cover, followed by the, the city of publication, the name of the publisher, and the year of publication. If we were to cite a second book by Diana Glyer, we would replace her name in the second entry with six hyphens and then provide the rest of the standard book footnote format, rather bibliography format. So the full title of the book in italics, period, publication information, period. If on your title page of your book an edition is named, such as in this case the sixth edition, that would also go after the title of the book like this. You would have the author's last name, comma, first name, period, title of the book in italics, period, followed by the edition information. If there were an editor or an illustrator or somebody else named on the cover, that would go after the edition information, followed by the publication information. You can abbreviate publisher name so long as the simplified name is not confusing. In this case, UP is used to abbreviate University Press. In many publisher names, for your bibliography entries and footnote entries, you can eliminate words like publisher, press, publishing company, lots of words like that, uh, so long as the simplified name is not confusing or could not be easily mistaken for 
some other organization. So far we've talked about how to cite books in our footnotes and bibliographies. Now we'll talk about how to cite journal articles, which is similar but provides a little bit more information. In a bibliography for a journal article, you would again provide the author's last name, comma, first name, and then you would provide the title of the article inside quotation marks. The title of the journal would be italicized after the article title. After the journal title, you would provide the volume number and issue number, and then in parentheses, the year of publication, followed by the page range in which that article is found. In this case, the first pound sign shows the volume number, the second shows the issue number. Uh, most journals provide both of these numbers, some don't, so just provide the numbers that you are able to provide. For example, we might have this article by Dennis Kennedy, Shakespeare and Cultural Tourism, in the journal Theater Journal, volume 28, issue number 2, from the year 1998, and that article can be found in pages 30 through 56. Take another moment and see if you can spot the differences between a footnote for a journal article and a bibliography entry for a journal article. The differences here are pretty much the same as the differences between footnotes and bibliography entries for books. I'm going to reorder the author's name, alter the indentation, and generally replace commas with periods. So after the author's name is a period instead of a comma, after the title of the article is a period instead of a comma, and then followed by all the publication information, the journal title, volume number, issue number, year, and the page range. For both journals as well as other citations to smaller pieces of larger publications, such as a chapter in an edited book, the title of the article or chapter is inside quotation marks, and the title of the larger publication is italicized. So in this case, the article title, Development of First Year Students' Conceptions of Essay Writing, is a smaller piece of a larger publication called Higher Education. So anytime you cite a smaller piece of a larger publication, the smaller piece is named in regular type inside quotation marks, and the larger publication is named in italics. We'll wrap this up by playing a game called Better or Worse. One of these samples is correct, one of them is not. Take a moment and see if you can spot which one is correct and which one is incorrect and why. In this case, the top sample is correct because the bottom one uses the bibliography format for a footnote. So it incorrectly has the author's last name first and incorrectly uses periods where there should be commas. Here's another book. In this case, the bottom sample is correct because the top one incorrectly uses quotation marks where the text should be italicized. This is a citation to a full book not to a chapter in a larger publication. So the title of the full publication, The Practice of Prophetic Imagination, should be in italics. Here's a journal article. In this case, the top sample is correct. Remember that smaller pieces of larger publications are named first in regular type inside quotation marks while well, the title of the larger publication, such as the journal in this case, would be named in italics. The second example has that formatting reversed. Here's the matching bibliography entry for that journal article. Here the second example is correct because the top sample is using footnote indentation, the first line indentation, while the second sample here uses the correct hanging indent for bibliography entries. Here's another book citation. This is a bibliography entry. Remember that bibliography entries generally replace 
commas between major items with periods between major items. So in this case, the second sample is correct. There's author name, period, title, period, publication facts, period. The top sample incorrectly uses commas. Here's a sample footnote for a book in a series. This happens to be a Bible commentary. And your hint is that it's a book in a series. In this case, the second, the bottom sample is correct because Genesis 16 through 50 is the title of a book and the title of a series does not get italicized. The title of a series is named in regular type after the title of the book. The top sample makes it look as if we're citing a chapter in a book, but this is actually a book in a series. So the second, the bottom sample is correct. So that's the basics of the Chicago Manual of Style. There are many more resources available to you uh, through APU, but also more broadly uh, through the internet and, and most major book retailers. So we highly recommend checking out the Chicago Manual of Style, which is currently in the 17th edition. You can see the ISBN available there. And earlier we mentioned Kate Turabian's book, which is based on the Chicago Manual of Style. This is a good academic writing manual that explains some of the common academic choices in the CMS style. It's much easier to read because it gives all the relevant information while leaving out some of the more detailed technical publication information. A good general resource for various writing styles is this one, A Writer's Reference by Diana Hacker and Nancy Summers. This is a good writing manual with specific instructions on several major styles, including APA. Of course, we would love to have you visit the Writing Center at Azusa Pacific University. You can send us an email, writingcenterstaff at apu.edu, or give us a call, 626-815-6000, extension 3141. I would highly recommend checking out our website, apu.edu slash writingcenter slash resources. This is a place where you can find many free PDF resources for various writing styles and various aspects of the writing process. We would appreciate your feedback. Please feel free to get in touch with us. We look forward to serving you in the Writing Center.